Hi everyone, this is Julian with Brady Repairs, and today I am going to show you how to fix a Sony PS1 that has no video out. So if we hit the power button here, oh, well, of course you gotta plug the video in the back. But if we hit the power button, you can see it has power. If you listen, and you look up here, we have zero video. A couple of things can cause this. Um, there is a diode that can cause this if it shorts out and goes bad on the chip, if there's a surge through the AV port. But realistically, the most likely cause on something that is 20 some years old now is the electrolytic capacitors have gone bad on it. So I'm going to use this kit here from Console 5, not sponsored sadly. Uh, and we are going to recap this PlayStation. So let's open it up. And these are pretty easy. There's six screws on the bottom that need to come out, which they always give me a little bit of problem. They're not quite as easy, number one, Phillips is some, as some other consoles, but you know. Just because it's number one doesn't mean they're all the same. Now I got this from a job lot I bought from a guy locally who sold me some ungodly number of broken systems for a pretty good deal. So I had a bunch of these and this is one of the last ones I have I haven't gotten around to fixing lately. So, it's straightforward, top comes off. Uh, I have been into this before when I was diagnosing it, so this is not actually connected, but if it was actually connected to be plugged into here and here with these two cables, uh, I'm pretty sure this laser works. I did test it in a different system. I gotta stop bumping that tripod. Um, pretty sure it works. So then we'll pull this off because yeah, it's all over there and pull up like this and just kind of wiggle it some and they'll come out move it over here and here we go uh, these are the electrolytic capacitors that are most like well these are the three that will actually cause no video but again i bought a kit it has all of them you can replace just these three but again this thing is over 20 years old they're probably all bad and Let's see if we zoom in, you might be able to actually see some leakage on. Hmm, let me see if I can get a light on that. Will this light it up for you? I don't think it's gonna focus very well, but. Yeah, it looks like there's some crud that leaked out of this one here so it definitely oh there we go yeah so I'm gonna pull these off and I'll show you how I do that and then I'll come back when I have them all pulled off so what you do in my case I'm using a multi-tool because I like the grip on these better but here, let me turn this back off but all you have but the method I'm using is a twist method where you just put the actually let's do one over here we know is leaking you just put this on here, and you just twist one way, twist the other, and just go back and forth. Kind of gently, kind of not, until if you're lucky, it'll pop right off. And if the legs are really disgusting and nasty like this one, it'll come off pretty easy. So, zoom back in again. Uh, that, all this crap is spilled electrolyte from the electrolytic capacitors, and it's basically just the capacitor spilling its guts and not being able to do its job anymore, so no current or data is actually traveling through it from this video chip, preventing you from getting an output. So I will be back in a little bit after I've pulled all of these off. Alright, I'm back and as I'm sure you can see I have taken every last capacitor off of this board and if we zoom in you can see all that crap is under literally it's a little hard to see on that one but literally every capacitor 
had some of that crap just spilled all underneath it. So the next thing you need to do, yeah, let me turn the soldering iron on, is you gotta clean it up. Uh, one method, which does work, I don't sometimes like doing it in this order. One method is to take a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol, which I know is hard to find right now, but if you have any, you need to use it. Well, not you don't need to use it for this, but this is what will get this stuff off. You just clean all under the pads and make sure it's all gone because you do not want that crap eating a hole through your board. And you can see all that crap just comes right off. Now I said a second ago I don't like doing it this way. What I prefer to do, and I'm going to have to turn the light on for this because my, my eyes are not phenomenal, so I have to be able to see, is you take your soldering iron, clean the tip. I'm going to add a little bit of my No Clean Flux. Uh, if you're in curious, this is just MG Chemicals Liquid No Clean Flux. I'm going to dab a couple drops onto there, probably more than I need, but... And we're just going to heat up the pad and pull off the old legs. So when you're twisting it, you're leaving the legs behind. So you just, just like that, you just come in, take off the old, take off the leg, clean your tip off, take off the leg, clean your tip, and you just rinse and repeat until you have done that to every single one. And then what I like to do is do this first and then go back over with a q-tip that way you don't have the legs getting caught all over the top of the q-tip so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through and clean all this up and then i'll meet you back here when it's time to actually go and uh put the capacitors on i can show you how to do that all right so i have gone and cleaned all of these pads up took uh, the soldering iron and just tapped into them, pulled the legs out, and I went and q-tipped all the old electrolyte off the board. Uh, I don't know if it comes up on camera very well, but on C550 there, the board is a little stained yellow, but you know, nothing you can do about that, just, it's not gonna hurt it, if you clean it up properly. So, next step is to remove the solder from these pads that's already there, the solder that is left behind looks like it would be good enough to solder to but I'm gonna take it all off with some of this solder braid and I'm gonna put some new fresh stuff on there and it should be like new when I do that uh, it'll make more sense what I'm talking about once I actually go and take this off and start recapping but essentially I'm gonna clean the pads off on one side of each one put some solder and then solder one leg down, solder the other leg, go from there. But first off, I'm going to show you how to do this. So you take your flux, put a couple dollops on there, you get your solder braid, and you get your soldering iron. And you just, like this, you just put it on there, wipe it around a bit, pull it off, solder sticks to the solder braid, not to the pad. And so I'm just going to go through, use the reach there, I'm just going to go through and do this to every single pad that I already desoldered. I desoldered, I just cleaned up and took the legs off of. So yeah, so again you just take it, tap it to it, and just do that. Uh, this stuff, some of it comes with flux in it. Uh, this is just some, you know, it's just some cheap desoldering wire I got on eBay. So I'm gonna go through and clean all of these off and retin one side, and then I'll show you how to attach the legs. All right, so I'm back again. I have gone and added solder to one side of every one of these pads, and personal preference I like to start with the side that is flat I don't know why I just do uh, you want to be a little strategic with how you do some of this because as you can see these some of these are really close together um, it's just be a little smart about it like if say this one here and this one here I would probably do this one first 
just because there's a little bit more room than trying to start this one here. It's, it's easier to do the second leg than the first leg. So like I would do this one here, then this one, or like up here, I would do this one, then this one. But anyway, so you take your capacitor from your kit, uh, comes in these little blisters, or in this kit if there's a couple of them that are just kind of free floating because there's only one of them in the kit. But if it's more than one of them, you get them in the little blisters. This is your surface mount capacitor. It's got its line here. I don't remember which side that is, if it's positive or negative. I never really have to remember with these because if you look on the bottom, there is this shape where it's got the two sides hacked off. That matches up with this shape on the board. So well, I guess I should point this one since this is what I'm going to do, but you place it on there so that they line up. So. What we're going to do is resolder that to the board. And I have changed my tip from my chisel tip to my very fine point tip. I prefer the chisel again. It works a little better, but I am in some pretty tight spaces here. So what we're going to do is just come in, line this up here. Oh, right. We're going to add some flux. Getting ahead of myself here. We're going to add some flux. And then we're going to line this up because it's easier to get the solder to take and run. Then what we're going to do, since there's still flux on there too, which is great, we're going to rotate the board. Don't be afraid to rotate your boards. Uh, I usually do this in a board vise, but for the sake of this video I'm not, just because it's easier to record it that way with the tripod I have. So what we're going to do. I'm going to tap it on there, and we're just going to, come on, we're just going to give it a little bit of solder. And, get a little nudge, it's on there good. So, get all this out of the way. Get my arm out of the way of the camera too, i got to get better about that, don't I? If we look here, it's soldered on that side, it's soldered on that side, and it's on. So then, I just have to do that for every single other capacitor on this board. Now if you're wondering how you know which capacitors go where, uh, there's a couple ways of telling. On the board, in the silk screen, you can see... Uh, let's find something to poke with. If you look on the board, right here in the silk screen is the capacitor number. So this is C5501. Sorry about bumping the tripod there. C551. Luckily with a board like this, you can get the schematic online and you can look it up, or if you're using console 5, on their website, they have a complete cap list with the number on the board. So like, C551 is a 220 microfarad 4 volt. If we look at what's on the board, what I just put on, it's one of these. Come on, focus. 220, uh, and then they give you a card with those numbers. I also have a pack here that just tells you this is a 220 4 volt. But if you're using the console 5 kit, they give you a card telling you how to read the codes. So, that's all there is to it. I will come back and we'll test this thing out and see how it works with the new capacitors. Alright, so I have gone and recapped all of these capacitors and now it's time for the moment of truth well first I'll point out that some of these caps in this kit are a smaller size than the originals like this little guy here but they're all the same rating or at least the same farad rating with some having a higher voltage rating which doesn't make a difference so without further ado Let's put it back in its case. We can see the laser works too. I actually don't know. Like I said, this I got this one broken. I haven't tested the laser at all. Let's put this back in here. Okay. And then we'll throw this over top. Um, since I'm going to test the laser, I'm going to actually put some screws back in the bottom, which shouldn't take 
but so long I'm going to actually use an actual hand screwdriver rather than the electric one I used in the beginning because I have actually broken my fair share of standoffs in these consoles before because it's you know 20 something year old plastic it's not quite as it's a lot more brittle than it used to be if you notice I'm spinning it to the left before I go and tighten it up going to the right that is to locate the screw in the hole so that it is screwing into the original threads and not making new threads and stripping the screw out. Again, I've also stripped a lot of screws out in these and it, it can mess with the laser's ability to read if the screws are not sitting correctly. PlayStation lasers are very finicky. Uh, a lot of them are easy, at least on these PS1 models are very easy to clean. They just... It's the older ones that got heavy, heavy use compared to these later model ones. Or these can also have very heavy use, but the older ones just existed longer, so they got used more. So they, those lasers were a lot less likely to work than these PS1 model ones. Okay. So. We have power, and... It's coming up on screen. Oh, that's an interesting yellow... Try to copy a Speedball 2100 here to see if the laser reads. I would be impressed if it did, but... I haven't done any cleaning to it or anything, so I'd be really amazed if the laser actually reads first try. Oh, wow. Call me amazed. Okay. Will it... Okay, well, don't want to get any copyright claims or anything weird like that, so we're going to cut it off there. Okay, so we have a working PlayStation 1, aside from that weird graphic glitch. That's caused by a dying encoder chip. Not a whole lot I can do other than replace it with one from a parts board I have in my parts bin. But that's all I'm going to do in this video. Uh, like it if you like it. Dislike it if you don't. Subscribe for more videos like this. I have a Sega Saturn repair coming up, and possibly some work on a Nintendo Switch. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.